Let's turn our focus to the first security clause listed in ISO IEC 27002, the Information Security Policy. According to ISO IEC 27002, the objective for an information security policy is to provide management direction and support for information security in accordance with business requirements and relevant laws and regulations. All right, so what does this objective tell us? Well, first, if the objective of the policy is to provide management direction and support, then management should set the policy and visibly demonstrate commitment to information security. The policy should be in accordance with business requirements and relevant laws and regulations. These should form the basis of input to policy decisions to assure stakeholders that appropriate, effective, and cost-justifiable security programs and measures will be developed and implemented. This objective is all-encompassing. The information security policy and practices need to span the whole organization, including relevant external parties, such as customers and suppliers. The information security policy should be documented and approved by the governing board and officers of the organization. Communication of the information security policy document should go to all relevant stakeholders, internal and external. This can be done by summarizing sections of the document that are relevant to certain parties or through any other means to ensure the information is available and understood by everyone. The information security policy document will contain information such as a definition of information security and the organization's business objectives, a statement of management intent in line with the business strategy, a framework for setting controls, including those for risk management, a definition of general and specific responsibilities for information security management, references to other policy and procedure documents that support this policy. Additionally, the information security policy document should contain a brief explanation of specific security policies and compliance requirements and violation consequences. These specific security policies may include policies for use and misuse of IT assets, password control, the use of email, the use of the internet, maintaining antivirus programs, and other technical or non-technical policies. One example of a non-technical policy is a clear desk policy which will state the policy for leaving information left unattended on a desk and locking information after working hours. This may include procedures for storing and locking paper documents, as well as leaving your computer system on, signed on, and unattended. Once the information security policy and related documents are written and approved, do you think we're finished? Did I hear you say no? Does your answer have anything to do with the continual improvement aspect of the Plan Do Check Act cycle we learned about earlier? If so, you're right. The information security policy is always reviewed for continual improvement. When should the information security policy be reviewed? Well, there should be planned intervals at least annually, and whenever anything changes significantly to impact the policy's appropriateness and effectiveness. Unplanned reviews may be in response to changes to the organizational environment, business circumstances, legal or regulatory requirements, or the technical environment. Reviews should also assess performance and compliance to the information security policy any new trends related to threats and vulnerabilities, and reports of information security incidents. Who should make sure that the review activities occur? The information security policy must have an owner or steward to facilitate these reviews and assure proper change control, including management approval. 
the owner must be given the proper authority and responsibility for the development, review, and evaluation of the security policy. How will I know if any updates have been made? All updates to the information security policy should be communicated in a way that allows stakeholders to clearly understand the change, especially changes where they have new responsibilities or procedures to follow. Documentation of an information security policy and related regulations, procedures, guidelines, and standards does not automatically create an organization that adheres to the security measures. An organization may need to implement awareness programs and other management systems to promote behavioral change and or update an existing performance management system to engage the organization in good information security management practices. Again, this starts through visible commitment from senior management. Additionally, new security roles need to be established to support and govern the ISMS and contacts with external security specialists including knowledgeable and skilled consultants and authorities may be needed to manage information security effectively to meet the business requirements. The job titles and roles needed for security staff depend on the size and nature of the organization. In a smaller organization, information security may be just one of many responsibilities for a single individual. However, larger organizations typically hire staff whose sole responsibility is information security management. Information security is applied both inside and outside an organization, as you'll see when we talk about controls.